Hi guys. Uh, I'm back again to read another story. Uh, I wanted to read another story that was um, relevant to the current situation with uh, protests and Black Lives Matter. Um, so this story that I'm going to read is called Swing Sisters, the story of the international sweethearts of rhythm. Oh, where'd I go? All right, I'm going to share my screen here. This is another story that I got from Epic, uh, which has a, a lot of virtual text. All right, so this is called Swing Sisters, the story of international sweethearts of rhythm. It's written by Karen Deans and illustrated by Joseph Hida. Way back in 1909, that was over 100 years ago, not far from Jackson, Mississippi, Mississippi, there was a special place for orphans. It was called Piney Woods Country Life School. A man named Dr. Lawrence Clifton Jones started the school. He wanted to make sure that, that these African-American kids had a good place to live, food to eat, clothes to wear, and a good education. In return, the children worked at the school to earn their keep. Some planted seeds and picked weeds outside on the farm. Others chopped vegetables in the kitchen or did laundry. Of course, they also did things that most kids do today, such as studying, reading, and playing games. They worked hard, but they had fun too. Most black people in Mississippi were poor back then, and many had never been given the chance to learn how to read or write. Piney Woods was a hope-filled place. Dr. Jones loved music and wanted the children to love it too. In 1939, he started a school, a school band that was just for girls. He called it the Sweethearts. Dr. Jones wanted the band to help raise money for the school, so the girls were expected to take it seriously, like a real job. The Sweethearts woke up at five o'clock every morning and filled their days with schoolwork and hours of practice. It could be exhausting, but they loved it. The music the girls played was called swing. Sometimes people called it big band music because there were lots of instruments and musicians, sometimes as many as 17. The musicians were divided into sections depending on what kind of instruments they played. The brass section was made up of trump trumpets and trombones. The woodwind section had clarinets and saxophones. The rhythm section was all about drums, piano, bass, and guitars. There was one singer who was the leader, like a conductor, who kept the girls together at the right tempo. And the sweet, sweethearts had a music coach who taught them new songs and put their music together for them. Swing. Now, that music was filled with energy. It was jazz. It had rhythms and melodies that got people up on their feet to dance. And like any good music, it told stories about how it feels to be alive. The Sweethearts played in churches and schools and other places. When the girls left Piney Woods, they kept the Sweethearts together and moved to Washington, D.C., where they hoped they could make a living as musicians. They lived like a family of sisters, spending all their time together, eating, sleeping, talking, and playing music. Occasionally, they got into fights like sisters sometimes do, but mostly they got along. They had a chaperone, named Ray Lee Jones to look after them. Ray traveled with the sweethearts, making sure they had safe places to eat and sleep. They traveled in their very own bus, Big Bertha, which had their name splashed across the sides. They ate on that bus. They played cards on that bus. Those girls even slept on that bus. At night, they would look out Big Bertha's windows and watch miles and miles of America flash by like a movie. They were doing something most girls couldn't have dreamed of doing because it had never been done before. Every so often, a band member would leave, but they were always picking up new musicians along the way. A sax player from Boston, a bass player from New York. The original members of the group were black, but the band grew to include people of many races and nationalities. The sweethearts didn't care as long as they could play music, as long as they could swing. They started calling themselves the International Rhythms of Sweetheart, or the International Sweethearts of Rhythm, excuse me. And pretty soon they found themselves in the big time. They got dressed up in beautiful gowns and fancy shoes and performed for crowds all over the place. 
one week they played the Howard Theater in Washington and 35,000 people came to see him. The international sweethearts were a sensation. People lined up in, up in the streets for hours to hear them play. Inside the theater, people danced in the aisles night after night. In the 1940s, there were other big band entertainers who were very popular, such as Louis Armstrong and Count Basie. They were leaders of male bands. The International Sweethearts of Rhythm was one of the very few all-female bands at the time. Women were discriminated against. They didn't get paid as much as male entertainers. Some didn't even get taken seriously, but the sweethearts worked just as hard as men did, and these women were good. Back then, Jim Crow was alive and well in the, weather, in the Southern states. Now, this Jim Crow was not a man, it was a name given to a group of laws that banned black people and white people from socializing and working together. That made it mighty risky for a multiracial band traveling and performing in states such as Alabama, South Carolina, and Maryland. Multiracial means that there are people of different races, black people and white people, Asian people, people different, multiple races. races. <clears throat> The white girls had to pretend to be black or they could be arrested. Sometimes they put on dark makeup, but usually they just tried to stay out of sight. They performed mostly for black audiences. Sometimes though, white people would come to hear them sit on the balcony. Once while the sweethearts were playing in a Southern town, some policemen heard there were white, young white women in the band. The policemen started searching the bus, but the women escaped. They jumped into a taxi and headed straight for the train station. The taxi driver was scared because he didn't want to get in trouble. He sure was glad to say bye to them. In the early 1940s, many American men were sent to Europe to fight World War II. Hundreds of African soldiers got together and wrote letters to the government asking for the sweethearts to visit Europe. In 1945, the United States Organization, or USO, arranged a six-month tour for the bands to travel to France, Belgium, and Germany. The sweethearts were treated like queens. The soldiers were thrilled to hear these talented women perform. For the soldiers, the sweethearts music was a long drink of cool water on a really hot day. The sweethearts came home and played for a while. They didn't make all that much money though, and before long they started to go their separate ways. Some got married and raised families. Some others got jobs. Some kept playing music for the rest of their lives. In a way, though, they all made a difference. Those sweethearts didn't know it at the time, but they helped open doors for women of all backgrounds. They gave hope to those who heard them play, and they helped show the world how to sing. Swing. Oh. They helped share the world how to swing. That was a really nice story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I will continue to upload stories, um, both uh, in textbooks and from Epic. I enjoy some of those Epic books, so I think I'll share some more of those with you guys. Anyways, I'll keep posting and I hope to see you guys soon. Have a nice day.